a data driven mindset really starts with uh, starts with humility, right? There, there are a lot of us who want to think that we're experts in a field. You know, we, we, we have a lot of expertise. Uh, we have a lot of experience. We've seen a lot of things and therefore we just, we know, right? We know when we see it, um, we, we know what's happening next. Um, and I think for us, it, we, we had to admit to ourselves that it, maybe we don't, <laughs> you know, maybe we don't. And m- maybe there's a better way for us to be more consistent decision makers. We don't, we don't know the answers. We can't predict the future. Uh, so what tools can we use that maybe can help us uh, uh, n- narrow down the choices <laughs> or at yeah. least just give us better odds? And, uh, and that's what we were constantly focused on, on doing. And it, and it was a continual reinforcement that uh, what we think we know uh, isn't always right. And we, we need to sort of investigate everything uh, to make sure that those things we think we see uh, are, are real. You know, a big, big theme for us uh, back then and even through today was the whole notion of I would say sort of process versus outcome, right? We, we all live in a very outcome driven world. I mean, it's, if you're a public company, you know, right now we're in earnings season, you know, you're going to get, you know, what were your quarterly earnings? What'd you do just in these last three months? You know, in, in something like baseball, you know, or football, we get charged with a win or a loss, you know, very black and white, 162 times a year in baseball or 60 this year, you know, 16 times in football. Um, it's all about outcomes. And yet to achieve those outcomes, I think what we really realized was that there needed to be uh, just a laser-like focus on process. And, you know, not that we were going to ignore those outcomes because there, there's certainly relevant data for us to be considering, but, but we really needed to focus on those sort of key drivers of, of success, uh, the processes in our decision-making, et cetera, and feeling confident that over time, uh, those were going to lead more to success there's a tremendous amount of luck in professional sports uh, and even probably in in the business world too, you know, but certainly in professional sports. And what we were really trying to do was strip out as much of that luck as possible by really focusing on our process and and believing in that. And um, again, I think there are a lot of great concepts from, from the story, but that that's one that I think gets at least gets overlooked a little bit because it really was key to uh, how we looked at the world. Really, I think, I think you have to go in knowing that you don't have all the answers, right? And there are people around you or, or within the organization uh, that have some of the answers. You know, I don't think there's anybody who has them all, right? But, uh, but there are probably parts of the organization that certainly have some answers um, and can help you piece the puzzle together, you know, over time. And they need to feel that. You know, other people need to feel that. They need to feel like they're a part of the solution. You have to, uh, you really have to help everyone understand what the framework of winning actually looks like. Yeah. And I know that sounds inc- incredibly simple, but it, it's pretty amazing um, when people actually dive back into their success. There are a lot of people who don't necessarily understand exactly why they were successful and therefore they're not able to repeat it if they were to go somewhere else. Now this is something I've had to actually do a number of times because each time I've gone to a different organization, you know, there are different resources. Uh, there, there are uh, different strengths and weaknesses of each organization. You can't ju- if they're not cookie cutter. You can't just take what you were doing in Oakland and use it at the Mets, right? It had to be a little, a little different because your circumstances were so different. So each time we really had to take a step back and understand what winning looked like. You know, how was it going to look like for, how is it going to look for the Oakland A's? How is it going to look for the, for the Mets? And, and even now, certainly in the NFL, how's it going to look for the, for the Browns. And then it's really getting everybody together on the same page and making sure we're aligned behind that shared vision to say, okay, this is what winning is going to look like for us. This is how we're going to get there. And this is how everybody's role is going to contribute to this happening. Um, And again, I think it's, I think it's really, uh, it's again, seems simple, but it's very important. A lot of times what we'll say is, you know, if you're an NFL team, what, what, how are we going to win? We're going to go win the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. How are we going to do that? You know, well, we're going to, we're going to win more games than everybody else. All right. How yeah. are we going to do that? Right. And you, you just have to keep backing up and backing up to you get some, to some very fundamental principles or the, or what we call the shared vision that everybody buys into. And then that helps you 
make a lot of your decisions, you know, whether you're in the draft, if you're trading for a player or even hiring decisions, you know, you have this shared vision that everybody, uh, everybody adheres to. And, and they know that if they, uh, if they execute on that vision, that, that the team ultimately is going to be successful.